my name is Mr. Ishengoma. Uh, today we are going to look at transformation. Now before we start, you can subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you are always the first to receive my new videos. Now back to transformation. The transformation in mathematics can carry two different meanings. To transform a shape, one is we can say is to change its position. That means the original look of the shape can remain as it was, but only the position where the shape was can change. In another meaning to transform is to change shape look shape look can change in many ways but for us our main concern will be on the size so if the size was bigger now we can make the size smaller or if the size was smaller we can make the size bigger now in order for us to do any of these two kinds of transformation we need to know four main basic transformations number one we need to know about refraction you know refraction we can use the idea of a mirror right so when you have a mirror and you stand on one side right you will always be refracted remember this is our object when you are refracted your image will be seen on the other side so what to consider right the e object and the image will always face each other right and the size from the object to the mirror will always be the same from the mirror to the image so we have seen under reflection one important thing that we need that will help us to carry a reflection is the mirror a mirror line so when you're using our grid boxes when you're using our grid when we want to find the mirror line it's usually given by an equation of a line in most cases we use the vertical and the horizontal lines so the equation name could be x is equal to zero or it could be y is equal to zero it could also be x is equal to any number or it could be y is equal to any number so all these are lines the lines which have got x is equal to a number are always vertical lines and the lines which are always y is equal to a number are horizontal horizontal lines at the same time we have to remember x is equal to zero in other words we can call it y axis and y is equal to zero we can call it x axis so to carry on a reflection we have now concluded we must have a mirror line and when we have a mirror line we shall reflect in this nature number two we need translation now to carry on a translation we need in other words we call it a column vector column vector column vector simply means the movement on the x-axis together with the movement on the y-axis in other words x-axis movement it can be going right from zero or going left from zero and y-axis movement can be 
from zero going up or going down so when we carry on this kind of movement starting with the x movement then y movement that's what we represent as column vectors in case i write two four this means two steps on the right then four steps on the down on the sorry on the up why up because it's a positive and this positive we can tell it from here going this side is positive going that side is negative and this is x or going up is positive going down is negative and this is y so if i go right i go positive if i go up i'm going positive right is for x and up is for y three rotation in order for us to call it a rotation we need two things we need to know the center of rotation remember a center of rotation is a point and a point is always given by the x reading and the y reading it could be zero zero it could be negative four negative two and four it could be any other point remember on the grid on the grid paper so together with the center we need to know the angle of rotation we have three main angles which we use all the time the first one is the 90 clockwise the second one is the 90 anti-clockwise and the last one is 180 degrees when you talk about 90 clockwise we mean this direction when you talk about 90 anti-clockwise we mean that direction but when you talk about 180 180 doesn't have any restriction because if i move this direction 180 will be down there or if i move this direction still 180 will be on the same position so we have seen under refresh under rotation we need center and the angle now we look at enlargement to carry on enlargement we also need two things we need the center of enlargement as we said before a center is always a point and it carries x and y as we have seen already there together with the center of enlargement we need the scale factor now here is where the importance is in order for us to do this we shall have to consider two things either fraction or wall number so to do that fraction will give us a shape of being smaller size a number will give us a shape of being bigger size these are the four important transformations in our next section we are going to see how do we do a real question which is on the grade papers thank you for watching my name is mr ishengoma